I think uh, it's going to be at uh, Bird's Bird Center. Where? Bird's Center. Oh, okay. And I'm not sure why. But I don't think we could get this one. Probably going to get more people. Things out on the beach. Good. 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 That's She's it. Okay. Yep. I didn't realize you weren't in yet. Okay. So I think we're ready to start. Sorry. Didn't mean to cut you off. Okay, it is 6.33 on Monday, the 20th of September. This is the Parks and Rec Commission meeting. Uh, I'm calling to order. Thank you all that are here in person and on Zoom. Uh, Judy Jeffers sent me an email this morning and um, she has been excused for tonight. She's out of town. Um, just a reminder when we're having discussion or comments just to speak right into the microphone it is difficult to hear on live stream if we're not talking right into it um, that those are really the only announcements I have tonight does anyone else have announcements for this evening okay um, then we will move to agenda item B1, which is the approval of the minutes from our August 16th meeting. Uh, I hope you've all had an opportunity to review those. Are there any corrections or comments to the meetings? Minutes? <laughs> Marty. Marty, you're muted. Marty, did you have a comment on the meeting minutes? She's not hearing you. I don't think she can hear you. Well. Uh, no, she doesn't have sound on. Harry and Christine and Candace, can you hear okay? Okay, so you you. so I'm texting her. Check. Can you hear us now, Marty? Okay, you're muted. So you have to come off yeah, mute. Yeah, I'm muted now. Okay. I'm did trying to pick something out. I can hear now. Okay, did you have a did you have a comment on the minutes? No, not no. on the minutes. Okay. All right. What was all the cheering about? Pardon? You look making I don't know. <laughs> there. All right. Then I move we accept the minutes. Okay. A second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Barry just walked out. This, it's, like, it's like herding cats. I'm taking it easy for you, Chairwoman. No, that's, that's all right. Well, well um, 
We'll just hold that for a moment until Barry comes back in. I, you, you want to make it unanimous? Well, I, you know, everybody should have the opportunity to vote. And yeah, so we will just hold the phone here for a moment. <clears throat> We're just, we're waiting on you for our, finish the discussion of the minute, meeting minutes. So, what? I we, didn't get my agenda oh. okay. on my phone. Oh, all right. So we had a motion from Rodney with a second from, was it Ed? Uh, to accept the meeting minutes um, as submitted. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, so we will move on to item, agenda item C, which is the commissioner's report. Um, I'll, I'll start off, uh, Rodney, with you. Um, you had um, submitted the master plan process uh, outline for Great Marsh Park, um, which is something that obviously we need to keep in the forefront. So if you want to lead your discussion with that. No, I think that was me. Did I, who did I say? You said Rodney. I'm sorry. <laughs> <You've> seen, I, <laughs> Barry, would you like to lead off with that? Uh, yes, I, I, I presented this, I think, probably two years ago. Uh, because people asked about the process that we needed to follow, and we talked about managing the resource that we have, the 66 acres out there. And uh, through my experience and talking with Rodney and also um, looking up what master planning park processes are, I came up with this outline uh, like two years ago, and I just wanted to represent it to everybody so that people kind of understand um, what the process is about and um, so that um, we can start to, um, you know, attach a timeline to some of these things um, because we are required by the state to um, submit a, a master plan. Uh, to the state in order to continue uh, the lease that we have with the state for the, for the property. Um, I'm not gonna read through all of it, but I mean, it starts with the development of, of the mission and the vision, and um, we're really just starting that. And um, from the surveys that we did in the past, uh, most people are indicating in the community that they want to keep um, the, the Great Marsh Park as um, a space for uh, passive recreation. And what we mean by passive recreation is um, those things that don't create a lot of noise, um, a lot of active uh, activity. It's more hiking and reflecting, bird watching, those kinds of things, trails, um, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's, that's number one, developing the mission and uh, mission and go vision, mission and goals, and that will include things like preservation, conservation, and kind of um, the direction that we've already gotten from the community. Uh, the next uh, part in, is the analysis and survey of the site of the existing conditions, flora, fauna, topography, facilities and programs. Currently, um, we're working on this. Um, we're working on getting the site surveyed so that we know exactly what the property corners are. Um, when the state gave us, or gave us the lease, they did not give us any information as to what the exact 
property corners uh, are. So um, that's something that we'll need to, to work on. Um, we've had um, uh, state forestry out there and has given us some, some advice and direction as to how we ought to proceed in terms of developing it. We've also had Bartlett Tree out there to um, help us look at um, invasive species and how to address and take care of those things. Um, number three is management and preparation of, of the site. Um, we are uh, attempting to manage the site right now um, and we'll, we'll prepare it for development. Keep in mind these things could be worked on, some of them will be worked on simultaneously. Um, then we need to determine and evaluate uh, the recreational needs for the community, whether it's um, uh, hiking trails or whatever kind of recreation um, uh, the community wants in that area uh, based on the, the mission and the goals that we develop, then develop pri priorities and fe feasibility studies. Um, maybe the, some of the fe feasibility studies will say, well, the land is not conducive for this kind of activity, or you know, maybe the, 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 um, the cost of preparing the land would be prohibitive. prohibitive. Um, so that's why we would have to do feasibility studies. Then design a plan based on the needs and priorities that we came up with, adopt a, a comprehensive plan with the Recreation and Park Commission here, and then uh, in, in, in to blunt implement the plan and of course this whole process involves a lot of planning and a lot of input from the community so i imagine it will involve a number of public meetings um, rodney is much more familiar with the process than i am because he's done that uh, uh, quite a bit in, in his profession um, do you have any comments rodney to or add yeah, or? yeah i think um We've kind of taken the uh, site analysis on by ourselves. Um, we have information on um, topography and we um, confirm the property lines and so on and where everything is. And um, so, uh, you know, the plan is <clears throat> when it gets a little cooler to go out and, and look and maybe the leaves drop so we can see better, we're going to go out and finish um, looking at the parcels because it is divided in the parcels and when the ticks and, die <laughs> yeah, yeah and and um and not only um well just basically try and record existing conditions as best we can and the gps will help us locate them exactly so that's and that's something that's very important to present in the beginning so we know you know what uh what the conditions can support out there because one of the parcels that i walk through is has um, uh, um, seasonal high seasonal water table high water table, mm -hmm. um, which means if you were going to turn it into something else, even putting paths and trails through it, it's it's an added cost. So that'll help us do that kind of thing, and and those are the things that I think we're going to then have to order organize public meetings to make those presentations so that everybody can understand you know what we're dealing with out there. In addition to doing what I always call the programming, which is visioning which is the first the first one at the end when you get when you finally get to a point where you you have a a plan a vision and then a plan of what's going to happen um, uh, under number eight you would then divide it into projects uh, if you can't do the whole thing at once then you divide in the projects each project would get a budget an estimated budget and, um, and then you would prioritize those projects. So which one do we need to do first? Which one do we want to do second? That'll give us, that'll give us the, the uh, kind of the marching orders of how to proceed at that point. And then it's just a matter of, <clears throat> of uh, finding the funding and proceeding with, with you know, the first project. So that's the way I see it happening now. The only question I have is in, in a master planning process, you've got uh, production work to do or documentation on drawings and uh, plans. Somebody's got to draw the plan. Somebody's got to come up with those things and reproduce them. And so the question is, you know, who's going to do that? What's it going to cost? So that maybe is something that we should put into the budget if, if, 
if we we're going to, and and what would that be a budget for? When would it start? Are we kind of past well, it now, or how does that work? Well, no. I, I mean, the budget process is just starting. Um, so for Parks and uh, Recreation Commission, um, the budgets should be in to me by the end of October. Okay. Like, like October 29th is the last Friday of the month. Um, my budget report is due um, on the 24th of November, and then mm -hmm. my first preliminary meeting with the city manager and assistant city manager is November 30th. So, and then any adjustments that need to be made have to be put in by mid-December, um, and then it goes to mayor and city council. You know, they do their, their right. final revisions. Um, Ellen Lorraine and, and does the final revisions, and then it goes to council. Um, there's budget hearings, and then council, uh, you know, makes their recommendations. So if, if we think that in this budget cycle we're going to be at that point, um, but I think at the very least to, um, you know, Great Marsh Park has always had a very small budget because there just wasn't, it didn't even have a commissioner. Um, and I think that that's something that we can talk about, you know, is possibly increasing for these kind of consultations. Um, but I think to actually talk about projects and planning for projects, I think we're in a different budget cycle for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So definitely. Yeah. But any any we... any assistance that you think we would need in the master planning process for, for fiscal needs. year twenty three, we should include that. So. Okay. May I offer one more person who could help you? Um, my husband is a professional wetlands delineator, and he did a pro bono. Wow. He did the delineation for the city pro bono when, of Great Marsh Park when the dog park was being developed. So he's done that. He's walked it. He, I asked him if he remembered it, and he does, and he thinks his flags might still be out there. Great. They're, they'd be pink. Um, but um, he said he would be willing to walk it, discuss it, you know, just show what he found, okay. and um, you know, sometime he could probably help. help us with the GPS GIS yeah. mapping that's of wonderful. it. He should. Yeah. I think he, he would have collected all that when he did what he did. Okay. Um, so that hopefully would save you some time yeah. and slogging. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll good. get in touch with him. Yeah. Thank you. Certainly. That's good information. Certainly. All right. Anything else, Barry on Any, Great Marsh? Anybody have any? Questions. I just wanted people to know kind of what this process was. We have a, lot, a, a number of new people on the mm -hmm. commission, and, and, and actually, I think I presented this before Janet. Even. Before, you, <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just kind of sat there and we did a couple of things. But anyway, we will start to work on this a lot more. Great. Now. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, um, our interns, uh, Christine, was very. Um, uh, energized about getting out there and doing some of the uh, GPS work, but we'll, I think we can, she's not with us any longer. She left in uh, August, but I think we'll see if we can get other volunteers, somebody that's interested in it, but we'd really appreciate Tom's help. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Okay. All right, Ray, Swanendale Park. Okay. Um... So on September 6th, I met with Warren Gold, and the uh, purpose of that meeting was to, uh, he had done a walkthrough through Zwanendel and wanted to discuss uh, the future partnership with Lewis and Bloom and what that would entail. And, and uh, I had gone to the park uh, just a few days before that and noticed some of the same things that Warren noticed. So uh, we made a list and we, uh, we have you know, work to do there and uh, you know, Lewis and Bloom has really offered to, to help out a lot with that. Uh, subsequent to that, on the 10th, we met with Janet, Marty Thompson, and Warren again uh, to uh, do the same walk around to discuss some of the things that needed to be done at the park. And uh, that meeting was uh, very productive as well. So uh, we, we are going to uh, 
uh, you know, work on that partnership with Lewis and Bloom and get some of the things done that need to be done. Uh, Marty was very good in introducing me to a guy named Bill Edelman, who uh, is her neighbor and uh, offered to, uh, uh, to help out. Uh, Bill is a, uh, uh, he, re he, he graduated from University of Delaware with a BS in plant science. He worked for Longwood Gardens for four years. Wow. Pre after that, he worked for the P.S. DuPont Estate up in Wilmington for 12 years and then started his own business for 32 years. So I met with Bill uh, on the, uh, I think it was the 17th, 18th, something like that. And uh, we uh, walked through and of course he noticed some of the same things that Warren and I had noticed about the park and uh, offered his expertise in pruning, especially the, the shrubs and, uh, and uh, in the park and we are going to meet next week. To, I said we're going to have put, put a plan together, and we'll have that plan together. And uh, he, we were talking about you know staging it, you know having a priority of what we should do first and what we should do second. And uh, he indicated that a lot of things could start around January of 2022 with the pruning. So uh, we're going to meet, we're going to meet together and go over that, and uh, and then basically put a plan together for the 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 winter to get things ready for the spring. Uh, so that's where we're at. Also, Lewis and Bloom uh, have identified the patrons that will be involved with, uh, with the park, Ann Hartzell and Pam Rankin. And uh, they were, we, we happened to be at the same time that I was meeting with Bill, ran into Warren uh, and Ann and uh, Ellen McCarthy and, and had a nice discussion there about the, what needed to be done at the park. So. Uh, I'm looking to the experience of expertise of others to help with that, and uh, I think we'll, we'll we'll put together that plan and present it to you, Janet, and then okay. move forward who, from there. Who were the patrons? What were their names? Uh, Ann Hartzell. Okay. Hansel. 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 Sorry. H a n g e l. Typo. And Pam Rankin. Okay. Thank you. And Marty, would you want to? be involved with um, Bill and Ray on their planning for pruning in um, January? Yeah, I, I, I like to, I'd like to keep my ear in and mm -hmm. my hand sometimes. And uh, I've talked to Bill quite a bit. He's, he's my next door neighbor. So um, I talked to him quite a bit and he has a very uh, a good plan in his mind on, on how to approach it. But yeah, I, I would like to be prized of um, of what's going on and uh, I will participate when I can. Okay, yeah. I, I think it's important to keep Marty involved in any of the pruning of the, the trees mm -hmm. throughout the parks. Okay, thank you, Ray. Any questions? Okay, Warren, what do you have for us tonight for 1812 and Mary Vessel? Well, I have very little actually. Um, the grounds that they Painted. I think the skateboarders did a number on them. Mm. Uh, I don't know how to prevent that from happening in the future. It's happened in the past. Build a skateboard park. <laughs> well, I was talking about it one time and rejected. Um, uh, after uh, most of the coast, coast day, uh, we planned to probably start taking out the annuals in the parks and replacing them with pansies and probably at the end of October, early November, we'll go to planting tulips. Also, the Lewis and Bloom Decorating Committee will be putting up some fall decorations in Mary Vessels and um, 1812 Park and also Second Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions for Warren? Ed and Harry. Oh, ha Harry may have more more than uh, than I can offer tonight. I've been kind of uh, uh, okay. Out ha of commission, so. Harry, do you want to report on uh, George H. P. Smith Park for us? Sure, it would be my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, we had, as we discussed last month, we had an incident with the discovering that we had hemlock, uh, poison hemlock, 
why isn't the park property? Uh, one of our neighbors uh, alerted me to it. I alerted everyone I could think of, including this group. And uh, the, the state even helped me along by sending out two bulletins uh, that were a lot worse than I was talking about. I mean, literally, it is poisonous. Um, uh, we got um, we got our uh, our landscape maintenance people to Envirotech to come out. Oh, a couple days later, and they sprayed every bit of it. Ed had gone out in the morning and marked it with orange paint uh, because somebody, one of the uh, the people listening in our meeting last night, last week, asked how we, if we would mark it so no one would mis have a, an error. So Ed went out the next day and with orange paint marked it, which made it really easy for the Envirotech crew. Uh, and they came out and sprayed it down. Um, and it's all dead. Uh, the point that Ed and I were looking at is that the seeds had dispersed before the plant had died. So we'll be looking for that plant uh, next year uh, to come up. And so we'll at least be able to tag it early and maybe nip it in the bud before it forms seeds. We can stop that cycle. Uh, so that was one thing. Um, Ed and I did, did several walk arounds of the park together. I, I walk on the park one to two times a day because of our dog. Uh, so I get a chance to inspect the park every day. Ed and I did some walk arounds and, uh, pointed out some things that are going to need it, need doing. And that's, I'm hoping to arrange to sit down with Janet Ed and I at the park. So we can talk about some of our thoughts for budgeting and Janet could give us some, some help on how to, we're going to need some estimates on some work done. So we were hoping Janet, that's, I've contacted Janet. So I'm hoping that'll be it. Uh, I can't think of anything else, Ed. No, no, it, it's definitely browned out, but we, we do want to follow up and, and physically remove as much of it as we can. And it's going to be ongoing for, years probably it's just something now that we are aware of it i think early spring we know what to look for and we can get a, get ahead of it and then we have to i think you know it's it's on the uh, city's website but we've got to try to educate the public as much as possible so that's just my feeling about that yeah i think it, i think it's still up on it was on the facebook page and the website and i, I know it's still on facebook I i'm pretty sure it's still up on the website but i think it was um a good identification and now you know keeping it on our radar as spring comes around and just monitoring it harry well and and i now that i'm i can identify it very easily uh when we walk i see it uh, i see it on uh over in the Fourth Street Forest, where the, uh, uh, not where um, it's been developed, but mm -hmm. the next area over, which is still open land, there's a lot of it growing in there. Uh, so we'll need to contact the people that maintain that. But that's the only walking I've taken. It's less likely to appear in people's yards. Uh, it really does need the wild but it needs, it needs a wet area. It likes sun and it likes wet, that I know. Uh, so we really should all be looking for it, especially in, in areas that are less, less cultivated and more natural um, because it is, it, evidently it's the most toxic thing. You, it, the seeds, the stems, the leaves, everything mm -hmm. are, are toxic, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Kay, would you like to talk about the beaches? Beaches have been very crowded. Yes. Uh, lifeguards are now done for the season. Mm -hmm. um, this weekend was jam-packed, as have been every weekend. Um, I think that um, I've, well, I've been working on items for the upcoming budget and um, also uh, coming up with... Um, vision plan and master plan. I'm working on that. 
Uh, the renaming project is really um, the most important thing I'm working on now, along with Ms. Drina, getting that moving. So that's really, when we talk about right. that later, that's, okay. and, and that will kind of be, um, how that progresses will be a guide for um, projects for this winter, hoping to get things set up with signage for this, uh, so when spring comes around, have a sign plan um, organized and set up and ready to go for when crowds come back. Okay, great. It was a busy summer for sure. It, it, um, it really has been. This was the first time I saw a big wedding though. Um, on, oh, there was, yeah, there mm -hmm. was a large wedding. It was very organized though. Parking, uh, parking was all contained. The wedding was contained and 10 minutes after it was done, you never knew it happened. Good. So um, that was really nice. Um, I mean, everybody was kind of watching from afar, but in, and enjoying it. I mean, right. there's tuxedos and the whole thing. But um, yeah, it was, it was a very dressy wedding. Huh. But um, so maybe we're getting back to that point again, yeah. even though we're doing this, maybe we're getting back to the point of more activities right. like that. Great. I just um, wanted to take a moment. I received a letter from a resident in town. Um, our lifeguards were very busy this summer. Um, and as you all know, they were previously under the police department. And um, this past winter, spring, they were moved under Parks and Recreation, um, which does make sense since the beaches were just um, identified as uh, a park as well. So I just, our, our lifeguards work very, very hard. Um, and I wanted to just give them recognition through this letter. Um, the woman wrote that she uh, wants to express my thanks and gratitude for the lifeguards that are stationed at Lewis Beach off of Savannah Road. Being physically handicapped, I haven't been able to get to the beach for years. But with my determination and the help of your lifeguards, I've enjoyed the beach this year. All of them had the patience and understanding to help me to and from the water, making sure I was safe. So thank you, Wes, Braden, Sydney, Kyle, Elver, Catherine, Raymond, making me able to enjoy the beach this year. I can't thank you all enough. So nice. they nice. definitely um, do make an impact. They're out there working hard, you know, making sure that people are safe and people are able to enjoy the beaches. So I just wanted to um, read that into the record. And she did send a copy to Alicia, the oh, captain as well. So. Good, because they're, the, they're, the, they're really ambassadors of the city to many people. Yes. And there were lost children. There were, you know, people doing unsafe things, and it was always, you know, sir, ma'am, mm -hmm. thank you, let me help you. And no matter how hot or how tired they must have been, you did not know that from the way right. they behaved. They're, they were terrific. Well, that, we were lucky that's, to have them. that's good to hear. So we'll welcome them back next year. Hopefully yes. the same crew will come <laughs> back. They really are a good crew. Uh, so that brings us to Rodney in uh, Canal Front Park. Canal Front Park, uh, very little to report. Uh, I have nothing to report for the friends, uh, but I want to say that, that you know we had to remove some plants this year that are um, uh, went in decline or, or died, mostly shrubs and a few small trees. So I'm in the process of putting together the, the budget for that um, and uh, including uh, you know an accessible path will I will include mm -hmm. in, in the proposed budget for the coming year. Um, the, the other thing is, I just wanted to mention, we had, I had talked before about the request for signs uh, directing people to the restrooms. Restrooms, right. I uh, think if is we... Is that something I should put in the budget? I would, I would put it in the budget, yeah. Okay. And then we'll just, we'll just get them printed up. Well, that could be some something. kind of thing that the friends could... You might Perhaps be able to, us. yeah. Um, yeah, they might be able to help us with that. Okay. But we can build that into the budget as well. Is yeah. there someone or, did I need to talk to in the city, or, or is it you, Janet, about how many we need and where, where they should go? We'll yeah, figure we that can, out together. we can figure that out, and okay. then um, I, can, I can talk to, I can get an estimate okay. um, on what that would, what that would cost. <coughs> Good. 
Yeah. And maintenance maintenance can help us with that too. They they work with um, a particular business here and you know okay. in Lewis. So we'll we'll figure that out and we'll get a, a rough estimate. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, um, Marty. Do you want to go over the tree program? Sure. Um, this month I've mostly been keeping up with uh, some light pruning and. Uh, inspections and uh, tree tag maintenance. Um, in particular, Janet and I did the pruning of more street trees and we started clearing um, mm -hmm. tree branches away from the path around Blockhouse Pond. That's, that's about it for me. Okay, any questions for Marty? All right, Candace and uh, Christine. Mm -hmm. I'll defer to Christine first and then I'll okay. fill in the, the rest. Okay. Uh, a report for Stango Park uh, concert series uh, and another successful season, which wrapped up on August 31st, a week later than usual, uh, since we had to uh, reschedule one of the bands due to inclement weather. Uh, hopefully next year we will have use of the high school auditorium um, so that if we do have inclement weather, you know, the band will be able to at least um, play inside. Um, so this is my big chance to thank Janet for doing a wonderful <laughs> job. <laughs> thank this you. Year, scheduling the concerts. It was a really nice mix of different genres of music. And I think that um, everyone really, really enjoyed it. Um, and thanks to Janet, everything ran smoothly. Um, we also I had, a, I think, an average attendance of 300 people. Mm -hmm. um, Janet might be able to concur with that, but uh, we had some really nice crowds this summer. There were and two two bands in particular that brought um, a, a audience of 700 plus um, participants, but the average I would say was around three. We had very good feedback on the survey. Um, Melody just put that into our Google survey. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be finishing up the report for DDOA this week. So it was, okay. it, it, we had very good feedback from the surveys. That's great. Very good. Um, as always, our thanks go out to our sponsors, uh, the Delaware Division of Arts and WSFS Bank for um, funding the concert, helping to fund the concert series. And uh, we look forward to next year. Hopefully we'll have another good season next year. Um, on another note, I guess those of you who are uh, in attendance tonight physically <laughs> at the Margaret H. Rollins Community Center, you will notice that you walk through the uh, bathroom construction, <laughs> which um, has begun. And of course, uh, most of the parking lot is being used for staging, but it looks as though they're um, moving along with the project. Um, and the only other thing I had to report was that the Lewis Junction Railroad and Bridge Association has finalized an MOU uh, with the city to move forward their plans for a rail car installation between the library and the Margaret H. Rollins Community Center. And that's all I had to report. Okay, thank you. Any mm -hmm. questions for thank Christine you. or? Okay, Candace. I'll just fill in with the uh, Children's Learning Garden had another very positive year with uh, participation from lots of children and of course outdoor activities this year were more important than ever and uh, Jen Noonan the Children's Librarian from the Lewis Public Library did uh, the story times all in an outdoor forum and uh, they also had special programs of course the ladybug program the tomato festival and, and some other things and those were all very popular with the children and so uh, kudos to all of the folks that are working in the Children's Learning Garden. They're creative. They dedicate their time to figuring out what grows best in that area. And the garden uh, adjacent to that, uh, which uh, replaced the shrubs that had been there, is beautiful and thriving. And uh, uh, thank you to all of those who dedicate their volunteer time to making that beautiful and productive. So good year for the Children's Learning Garden. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Candace. <clears throat> Any questions for Candace? Okay. Um, Barry, is there an update uh, from the Public Art Committee? Sure. Um, 
We actually we have a, a meeting on, on uh, Wednesday, but mm -hmm. um, the uh, unbounded uh, the pile of rocks <laughs> in Canal Front Park, as it's so affectionately called, mm -hmm. uh, was removed this uh, weekend. Uh, so um, that's uh, mm -hmm. no longer uh, for for view. Hopefully, hopefully everybody got a chance to see it and react to it. Effervescence in um, Smith is still up and will be up um, and removed sometime in October. Um, on November the 3rd, we're going to have a, a public art seminar uh, and community meeting to invite people to react to what they'd like to see in Lewis and what um, their expectations of the public art committee are. Um, the um, uh, Kate Dodd, the um, artist for Effervescence is gonna be there and uh, lead some discussion. And um, there are gonna be a no number of other things on the agenda. And actually um, Rodney Robertson is also gonna uh, speak a little bit about uh, art placement and how to place it and why we place it certain places and such. So um, everybody should um, plan to attend that and we're hoping that um, some of the city council members will be able to attend that because we pur purposely scheduled it um, when they did not have any There's meetings. There's not another meeting. Yes. Right. So we would like to see as many people as we can to, to kind of get a read on you know, this first two years was kind of our inaugural year. The first year was kind of tough with COVID and, and uh, we didn't do a sculpture, but we actually did a pretty interesting um, uh, mural that's, that's up and will be up for 18 months. Um, and we were lucky enough to get two sculptures this year, which uh, we were very happy about. Two very different ones, yes. I might add. And I'll have to tell you one experience I had, and I, I would ride my bike all the time, so I would often take the detour through the park and ride the bike past the um, effervescence. I rode, was riding past there, and there was a whole group of people. Um, you could tell some of them were younger, uh, in and around uh, effervescence, the sculpture. And after chatting with them and, and, and uh, kind of realizing what was happening, it was a group of people that were uh, kind of taking uh, some uh, mentally challenged uh, adults and kids out on an outing, I guess, mm -hmm. in the park, and they were just having a blast and talking about a, how it looked like a rainbow and, you know, the leaders as well as everybody that was participating were, were just really overjoyed with it because it was so different and so mm -hmm. interesting. So that's that nice kind of made hear. my day when I, when I, when I saw that. It draws people, yeah. So yeah. That, that's all. Okay, thank you. Well, that brings us to uh, item D1 under old business. Uh, presentation, discussion, and possible action on the recommendation from the African American Heritage Committee for renaming Beach 2. Um, they've had, I think, two or three meetings um, to discuss their recommendation for the renaming of Beach 2. Um, I will say that um, they unanimously passed the uh, renaming of the beach two to Johnny Walker Beach, um, J-O-H-N-N-I-E, Walker Beach, after a um, very prominent uh, man in the community who ran a business down at Beach Two, um, really welcomed everybody at Beach Two. There was dancing and music and food. Um, and it was um, an experience that was very much a part of the African-American community um, and how they enjoyed um, the beaches and the water. 
Um, we do have Trina Brown Hicks with us here tonight from the African American Heritage Committee. And Trina, I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, certainly you have um, been very much a part of those discussions with the committee. And if you wanted to come up to the podium and just um, talk about the experiences and some of the discussion behind that decision and how important it was is to the African-American community, um, we would welcome that. Thank you, Trina Brown Hicks. And um, I just wanted to say I, I'm just so happy to, and proud to be a part of the commission to see some of the things that we are trying to honor and um, have uh, the Lost Parks and Recreation um, Committee and Commission and the B the Beach Commission and our our Commissioner Miss Kay um, uh, show support in in that area. So um, the the beach was um, a place for everyone to to go to and come to and enjoy in the hot summers and um, churches and the neighborhood and people from all over, as I, we've mentioned many times before, came to enjoy the beach and, and have a place to go with their children and, and feel safe. So I thank you for um, having, um, just embracing, and I'm hoping that everyone <laughs> embraces uh, the, 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 the renaming of beach number two. Thank it's you. Part of history. Yep. Thank you, Trina. Um, I did receive, and I, I sent it out late because I took a few days off at the end of last week. Um, I know. I hope you all got it, but if not, I do have um, copies here. We, um, the city received uh, a communication from the Lewis Beach Civic Association, um, and I will read to you their, uh, their comments, and it's signed by... Many, many, I didn't count how many, but um, the Lewis Beach Civic Association, on behalf of the following members of the Lewis Beach Civic Association, we respectfully re support the recommendation of the Lewis African American Heritage Commission to name Lewis Public Beach II after Mr. Johnny Walker. We believe it is an important and deserving tribute respectfully submitted and the listing of the members of the Civic Association. Um, we did have uh, one letter that was received and I just received that today um, in opposition of, of the name um, and um, they were concerned about the connotation of Johnny Walker um, I think the, the, the spelling is different um, and, you know, but I just wanted to, those were the two comments that we received regarding the, the naming of the beach. Um, so is there further discussion? Any comments? Yes. It is the spelling I-E and not... It is J O H N N I E Walker. In, in like the Cape Gazette, it was not spelled that way in early articles. Correct. And so I, I, reading Bonnie Boschel's letter, I was going to bring that up. Because yes. I lived in Lewis for 30 years and I never heard of Johnny Walker in my first reaction was, well, that's a Scotch whiskey that I <laughs> Well, and, and I, I, I think that that's why it's very important to go on the record that the correct spelling is J-O-N-N-I-E and the importance... J-O-H. I'm sorry, J-O-H-N-N-I-E and the importance of um, what he provided to the community and in the community at large. Um, so, yes, it is J-O-H-N-N-I-E. I, I think okay. what, what I've learned from listening is that um, I, I was very surprised at the Heritage Commission's 
and others' emotional response, because mm -hmm. I thought I was just asking a pretty, like, you know, what would you like kind of question. And the outpouring and people I spoke to on the phone were just, oh, I think about his name, and I think of wonderful Saturdays and Sundays, and the first time I heard this kind of music, and I could go and I could relax and be myself. And it was so emotional. And one thing that's grown out of this is having historians record and videotape those who remember mm -hmm. and to capture these memories um, uh, by family members and others in the community, uh, many of whom are not young. And that's been wonderful. That's been a real legacy of this. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> as well is that Mr. Walker was a, an advocate for the community um, and from what I'm learning, um, a very prominent businessman who provided housing for people um, and he also, from what I'm understanding from some relatives, that he um, participated in the board at the old Sussex Trust, and that was mm. unusual for African American mm. of that time frame to be able to do that. And also, um, I'm understanding he may have been also a notary, which is again another rare mm. thing for that time period for an African American. So he provided housing from Milton, Georgetown, Laurel, um, and Ellendale. So it's so he, 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 from what I'm understanding, he was, he was a millionaire <laughs> who, who outreached to the community mm -hmm. and did all he could, could do and, and started from meager beginnings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, he can't help his, his name being Johnny Walker. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and he, he was just a wonderful person from everyone that I've talked to and spoke to. I have a question. Um, are there plans to do uh, an interpretive panel so the people who don't know who Johnny Walker was can find out? That's our, beach, that's our hope. That's our yes. hope. Yes. Because our assumption is people are going to say, why is, who's Johnny Walker? Right. And so we want to have an explanation there. Right. And um, because there were two things that I heard, I think it was Miss Maddie Simpson say, mm -hmm. that he didn't see a line between black and white which during Jim Crow is pretty amazing. And that hard, for him, hard work was how you succeeded. Mm -hmm. So those were his two, um, his words to live by. And I just think that, because um, you're very kindly collecting photos, because we don't, we aren't, we aren't able to find anything formal. So we're getting, actually they're kind of even better in a way because they're candids of folks on the beach and you know mm. kids and adults and you can see the cars between the cars and the clothes you can guess the time mm -hmm. right. and so that's pretty great and i think if we have a panel i'm thinking grand i'm thinking like a three panel setup with photos of what went on here and what did this mean to people and who was this man and what was he all about mm -hmm. and what we can find out about him so um that's my goal. Um, another goal is to have a state historical marker, and that's um, a much longer term goal because that's just a slower process by its nature. Mm -hmm. So I've done a rough draft of that, um, and you know that'll take. I'll need help with that to have that succeed. But I'd like to have that, uh, and then uh, I'm a member of uh, Colonel David Hall chapter of the DAR and they have voted unanimously to sponsor that marker and care for it and push to get it done. And um, this is a group of very active ladies who will get it done. And um, so it's very important to them to contribute. And you know, it, this is not easy history. You know, for right. all that there's a positive aspect, this is tough stuff. And I think the city is in an emotional place where it can take it and say, you know, there was a period where this was, this is difficult to recognize. It's not all nice and easy. This is the hard stuff. And I think we're in a place where we can look at it 
understand it and try and come to terms with it. Uh, you know, each person individually mm -hmm. come to terms with that. So it, it's uh, started out as just sort of renaming, but it's become something much bigger and, and deeper. In my eyes. <laughs> Thank you. Does Johnny Walker have any family left? He does. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave, Trina. <laughs> he does. I have been in touch with um, um, Miss Maddie Walker, which mm -hmm. was a, um, a niece of his that Mr. Johnny Walker raised. He did not have any children. He and his wife did not have any children of their own, so they raised their nieces and nephews. And they helped him uh, running the business of Johnny Walker's on the beach. And Miss Maddie, she has loads of stories. So when I actually do the oral history, I would be so happy for everyone to be able to be able to access that. So um, I'm planning on trying to do that oral history online um, mm. so that uh, everybody can hear the wonderful story. It may have to go in three parts. <laughs> so much great information to share with us, and there's other family members, but um, they also attended one of our um, meetings when we were making mm -hmm. the um, motion to rename. Great. Other questions, comments? Well done. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so the recommendation put before the Parks and Rec Commission um, is to uh, the recommendation from the African American Heritage Committee uh, is to rename Beach to Johnny Walker Beach. Is there a motion? Anyone want to make a motion to support the recommendation? Yes. I'll make the motion. Okay, we have a motion to support that recommendation. Is there second, a second? second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. No opposed. The motion carries unanimously. We will make that recommendation the next step to mayor and city council uh, for their agenda at their next meeting. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, it's Trina, for important. being with us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And that, uh, we have no new business. Um, so that brings us to the end of our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? It is 7.30. Thank you, Ed. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Rodney. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. We will see you next month, if not before. <laughs> Hopefully before. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>